In my last couple of videos, we looked at charging supercapacitors with my uh, power supply at uh, relatively high current. Now we're going to look at a smaller scale version of that. And it works basically the same except for you're dealing with less current. So a negative side of a 1000 microfarad capacitor to the negative power supply and the uh, positive side right there to this resistor. It's a uh, 1000 ohm resistor that goes to the positive side of the power supply to charge it. This is the oscilloscope cables so that we can look at the voltage of the capacitor in relationship to ground right there. That jumper right there will let us discharge the capacitor instantly because there will be ground on both sides when I make the uh, connection over there. And uh, you'll see on the oscilloscope the voltage dropped instantly when we discharged it and then it charged. It uh, charged in a ramp, a straight line, the voltage was going up steady and then at that point the amount of current going into the capacitor slowed down and uh, so we had a curve where the voltage didn't go up as fast and ultimately we ended up at the supply voltage of uh, 7 volts. It's up 7 squares there and you can see we got 7 volts there. I tried to limit current to 1 milliamp of current but I think this really can only go down to about uh, 2 milliamps of current minimum. So now just for fun I just thought of this. We will do that uh, once with the uh, 1 milliamp set but again I do not believe that it is really only providing 1 milliamp. Uh, 2 milliamp set there same thing and then we will set it up to uh, 3 milliamps really quick and then we will set it to uh, 4 and do it one more time right there and uh, why not let's do 5 milliamps as well the uh, line should be getting uh, shorter and rising up quicker and we are going to pause this right here so we will look up here at this bar so if I uh, press what do I got to press I forget that one right there so been a long time since I've done this you can see that got highlighted up there that bar and when I turn the uh, dial you can see that it shifts and uh, that bar is moving to the left because we're going to earlier times right there and uh, so I think that was the that must have been the second one just the first one here and uh, we went all the way back so when you get these brand new if you ever buy one of these at least when I bought them it starts halfway which is really annoying because it's not reading uh, in real time it takes a while to get to that halfway point and so you want to uh, turn it like that until it's all the way to the right and those double arrows they'll go away if I press the button that means I have to turn more to uh, move the same amount of distance right there so those arrows speed things up but in any case we are at our first where I set for one milliamp and I'll set it right there. You're going to see the line is straight. That's called a voltage ramp for about three seconds right there. And uh, now we come here. This is where I upped it to uh, two milliamps. And it does look like we got more current here. So one, two seconds. The line looks pretty straight. And then we got the curve. So maybe it does better getting close to uh, one milliamp than I thought. Now we are at uh, three uh, milliamps right here. And you can see the line goes straight, uh, maybe about there. It looks like it's starting to curve, somewhere right around there. So it's much quicker, about a second, where we have constant current. And then the resistor starts limiting current after that point. And here you can see that uh, probably that line there, yeah, I must have had a discharge for a while. Uh, straight line, I think about there again. And finally, I think this was the uh, 5 mil amps. That's as far as I can go. There you can see that uh, looks like it's rising somewhere about the same. So I think it's mostly the resistor now that is uh, limiting how fast the voltage rises other than depending on the constant current source. So here's the capacitor. I pulled it out of the board. 1000 microfarad, which is the same as 1 millifarad or 1 one thousandth of a farad. I don't know why they keep going microfarads instead of uh, millifarads. We could charge it up to 35 volts, but you may have noticed even at 7 volts when I short circuited it with this uh, jumper here that uh, goes to ground and then the negative side of the capacitor was the ground. There was a spark right there. And uh, so 
even at this relatively low voltage, we can make a spark. And one thing to be aware of is with supercapacitors, very large value capacitors, that spark will be uh, vaporizing metal. So uh, you don't want to short circuit supercapacitors. This is probably about as large as you want to uh, short circuit right there. And we were already making sparks, which uh, really isn't good, but it's not terrible either. So now here's the diagram. It's mostly writing because the circuit itself was uh, pretty straightforward. We had a current source, a resistor, and a capacitor. Now, we were looking at an earlier video supercapacitors, and we looked at how current started going down, even with the supercapacitor, when we had the uh, power supply set to output a certain uh, amount of current directly to the capacitor. That's because the wires, and uh, even the capacitor, has a little bit of actual resistance and uh, so when you're trying to do a high amount of current even a very very small amount of resistance will start affecting it at some point when the voltage of the power supply and capacitor are pretty close to each other that leaves less voltage for the rest of the circuitry to uh, allow a lot of current to go through so in any case we had the ramp as long as the ramp the voltage is changing steadily over time then you know it's constant current. The same amount of current is going into the capacitor over time. Once the uh, ramp started bending into a uh, curve here, this is actually the RC time constant, the voltage is dropping across the resistance, so it can't keep the current as high anymore. As voltage across the resistor goes down, current goes down. So the capacitor is charging slower. It's taking longer for the voltage to go up. It does a curve right there. So that's when you know that uh, the capacitor voltage is removing too much voltage from the uh, supply here for it to uh, maintain that current. That's what it's saying there. And then finally when it flat lines, you saw it flat lined at 7 volts because we didn't have like a diode or something that drops some of the supply voltage. The resistor finally lets the capacitor fully charge even though it takes a relatively long time. So once it flat lines then you know you are at the supply voltage for this circuit or even a, a super capacitor or a high capacity uh, battery that's getting powered by a current source because as I said before the wires have uh, resistance and stuff so they'll start limiting current before it's fully charged even if uh, technically the power supply is directly to the uh, power storage capacitor or battery so one farad what that means is that if you have one farad of capacitance, either a single capacitor or capacitors in series, remember their capacitance goes down, you want to use equal value capacitors, and it gets divided down. So we could have uh, three, three farad capacitors in series, it would drop the capacitance to one farad. And then you could use higher voltage. So if you're putting one amp though into uh, one farad of capacitance, it'll take one second to change one volt. So one second to go from one volt to two volts and uh, two seconds to go from one volt to three volts and uh, so on so for each volt change it takes about one second remember though don't exceed the rated value of the capacitor if you need more voltage than a single capacitor can provide you put them in series and uh, we'll look at that in another video in more detail but uh, 10 farad if you got one amp either going in or out takes 10 seconds for each volt right there now we looked at the 1000 microfarad which is the same as 0 0.001 farad 1 one thousandths of a farad or one millifarad so m is not the symbol for micro it's the symbol for milla even though when you're buying capacitors from uh, auction sites or whatnot they might put mf there meaning uh, microfarad because they're cheaper but uh, actually MF is millifarad so you gotta pay close attention if you, it looks like you got a larger uh, value of capacitance than the price should be there's a good chance they actually meant uh, microfarad which is a smaller uh, unit but uh, in any case if you got one one thousandth of an amp going in one milliamp to a uh, one thousand microfarad capacitor takes again one second to change one volt same rules you just got a different amount of current and uh, does look like we dropped below two milliamps of current but I thought my power supply was uh, really outputting uh, two milliamps when uh, we 
had it set to one milliamp. So I don't think it was as bad as I thought it was, but uh, still, uh, the two milliamps was probably more accurate. You could see it took about three and a half seconds for the uh, line to go from a straight to a curved. And uh, so I believe that uh, it was close to two uh, milliamps both both ways there. So hope that makes sense. But uh, any case, that is about it. I think I uh, covered all this again. If uh, you're using a high amount of current, just a very little bit of uh, resistance can start lowering how much current is being provided. Always be aware of that. So even if you don't have a resistor in your circuit, at some point you're going to notice current being limited because there's not enough voltage over the resistance in the circuit. So there's nothing wrong. It's just resistance that you can't uh, avoid. Because everything has at least a little bit of resistance other than superconductors, which uh, nobody uses in everyday life. So, hope that made sense. Hope you enjoyed. Check out uh, one of the other videos I'm posting, and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.